In this video, we're going to take a look at Django Crispy forms. We're going to build a form in Django that we're then going to refactor using Django Crispy forms. The documentation leads off boldly with the statement, forms have never been this crispy. Now, the important thing to know is that it provides you with a crispy filter and also a crispy tag that you can use in your Django templates. And that can help you render your forms in a nicer and more stylistically pleasing manner. So we're going to build a simple university enrollment form. It's not going to have a back end. It's not going to integrate with the database. We're purely going to look at how Django Crispy Forms can help with the styling and with adding other attributes to your forms. So within VS Code, I have a project open. The server's running on port 8000 and we can have a look at that now. It just says hello and we're going to change that template throughout this tutorial. So let's start by building the form. If we go to the forms.py file, we've got a university form and currently there is nothing in that form, but it inherits from the Django forms.form class. And we're now going to build out a basic form with four fields. So let's remove the pass statement here. And we're gonna build out these fields now. Firstly, we have the person's name. We'll just say that's a car field. Then we've got the age, which we will say is an integer field. Now we're going to define a subject field, and this is going to be a forms.choice field. And we will define the choices to be subject choices. And I'm going to paste these in above here in the form class. So we're going to have these subject choices, web development, systems, programming, and data science. And we attach those as choices to our choice field. And finally, I'm going to define a date of birth and that's going to be a forms.date field. So throughout this tutorial, we're going to build on this form and add different widgets. We're going to add Django Crispy forms on the templates, and we're going to add some HTMX attributes at the end to show how that's done and how it integrates with Django Crispy forms. But for now, this is the basic structure of our form. So what we're now going to do is send that form to our template via the context. So in the views.py file, we're going to add a key for the form within our context and we'll instantiate the university form and pass that in um, as the form key. So now we have access to the form within our template and we'll replace the hello with um, the rendered form like that. So what we can do now is we can inspect the front end. If we go back to the page and you see now we have these fields but the form at the moment is rather ugly. You wouldn't want to use a website that defined a form like this one. We can add some very basic stylistic changes such as the form.asp that will render each field as a paragraph. Again, that's not very nice. It arguably isn't much better than it was before. So let's now bring Django Crispy forms into the mix and we'll see how we can use that to make this form look better. So the first thing to do is to install Django Crispy forms. On the documentation, you should see a installation section on the left hand side and we can copy the pip install command and execute that within our terminal, ideally in a virtual environment. And that'll install that within your system. And once that's installed, you can then add it to your installed apps. So go to settings.py and within installed apps, you can add crispy forms. And if we go back to the documentation, you should see that Django crispy forms has some template packs for different libraries, CSS frameworks. We're going to use the bootstrap four template pack. So copy this particular setting. Again, this goes into settings.py. It's called crispy template pack. And we're going to set that equal to bootstrap four in this tutorial. So right at the bottom of your settings.py file, crispy template pack equals bootstrap four. And that's all the settings that we need. We can now use Django crispy forms within our template. And what we need to do is load the crispy forms tags. So add that statement within your template at the top and then on line six where we actually render the form i'm going to change this line here i'm going to use the crispy form tag so crispy and we pass the form to that tag and that's all we need to do so let's run the django server again and we'll go back to the front end and now you see we get a form that looks much better we have these bootstrap rendered form fields and the drop down list looks better now what we're going to do next is we're going to change some of the widgets that are being used in these fields. We've seen now how easy it is to use Django Crispy Forms to change the styling a little bit. Let's now change the subject. That's currently a drop down. 
we want to now use a radial input. So we're going to see how to do that. And we also want to change the date of birth. This should be a date widget. At the moment, it's a text field. That is not ideal. So we're going to change that as well. So let's go back to our forms.py file. And within each field, you can pass a widget to control how it's styled. So we're going to do that for the subject field. That's a choice field. And we'll pass widget equals forms.radio select for this particular field. So if we refresh the page, we now see that instead of a drop down, we get this these three radio buttons instead, and we can pick one of those. So let's go back to VS Code, and we're going to change the widget being used on line 17 here for the date field. The widget in this case is going to be a forms.date input, and to that we pass an attributes dictionary, and we're going to specify that the type of this field should be a date type. So all inputs in HTML have a type. Currently this one, as you can see here, is of type text. We want to change that and use a date field. So if we do that and refresh, we now see that the format has changed and we have a date field. And if you click on that date field, depending on whether it's Chrome or Edge or Firefox, this might be slightly different, but you get this date widget. And that is what you can use to select a date. And we can improve that further since this is a date of birth we can specify that it has to be before the current date. So what I can do there, you can add another field to this attributes dictionary and the field for this date input is max. So we can specify that the maximum date we can enter is going to be the current date. So that's date time dot now and we'll convert that to a date object and we import from date time the date time object at the top here. And with that, we can refresh the page. And now when we select that, you see that the dates after the current date are grayed out. So let's move on. What we're going to do next is we're going to use the Django Crispy Forms form helper, which is available here on the documentation. And the form helper is something that you can use within the forms init method. And that allows you to customize certain aspects of the form. And we're going to see a couple of examples right now. So let's copy this code here. Uh, this init method and we're going to place that within our university form and at the top here I'm actually going to import uh, these things here I'm going to import reverse lazy from Django URLs we import the form helper from crispyforms.helper and from crispyforms.layout we're importing submit we're going to see what that is in just a second and this form helper that we've defined on line 11 here we can use that to set additional attributes of our form so for example what we're going to do is set the form action and the form action we can reverse lazy here we can reference the index url this is just to demonstrate how you would set up the form action using django crispy forms we're not going to handle submitting the form in the view but if we now refresh the front end here you see that if we inspect the elements we have now got a form element we didn't have that before this form action element here if we comment out the action call here on line 12 and we refresh the page, you see that the form action disappears. So there's no way to specify where the submission should be sent to on the server. If we bring back that action here, we can rev use the reverse lazy function. This is similar to the URL template tag. And what it does is it looks up your URLs by name. In this case, it uses the name of index and it can then turn that URL name into the proper path for that URL on the server. So the form action gives us a way of specifying that. And on the helper, we can also specify the, the form method. And in this case, I could set that to a get request. As you can see at the moment, this form has a method post. So the submission is via a post request. If I now refresh this, you see the method has changed to get, and that's because we're setting this attribute on the form helper instance within our init method. Now, the final thing I want to do is I want to add a submit button to the form using Django Crispy Forms. So I'm going to paste this line of code here. To the helper, we add another input, and this is of type submit, which we imported from the crispyforms.layout module. And that submit button now appears on the front end underneath the form here. If we inspect this element, you see that it's got this type submit. And that means that when we hit this button, we're essentially going to submit the form to the server and it will be sent to whatever the form action endpoint is. So this is just demonstrating that Django Crispy Forms it makes it very easy to add 
attributes to your form. You can add submit buttons and other inputs to your form within the forms init method. Now the final thing we're going to do in this tutorial is we're going to see how to add HTMX attributes to a form field. Now the HTMX attributes are added to the fields in the HTML code. What we're going to do now is use this class here for the form and we're going to add them via a widget attribute dictionary very similar to what we did here for this date input where we attached a dictionary of attributes. We can also do that with our HTMX attributes as well. Now within the base.html file we are loading up HTMX here in this script tag. So we have access to HTMX within the index.html file because that extends the base.html file. So what we're going to do is we're going to target the name field which corresponds to this uh, element here at the top and let's attach some HTMX attributes to that. So we're going to set a widget here and it's going to be equal to a forms.text input. And to that again, we pass an attribute dictionary. And here we can attach the HTMX attributes such as HX get, and we'll specify where that get request should be sent to. And again, we can use the reverse lazy function as we did here when we set the form action. And we can specify that that's going to be sent to the index URL by giving that parameter index. And we can also specify the HX trigger here hx trigger and that's going to be equal to the key up event. So now if we save that and refresh the front end we should now see if we inspect this particular field here we have the hx trigger and the hx get attributes are now attached to this input. So if I go to the network tab and we clear this we should now see that as we type into this we are actually sending these htmx ajax requests to the back end so it's all working with this setup. And on the terminal in the back end, we see the get requests are coming in. So this is all working. This is how you attach HTMX attributes to your Django form fields within the form class itself. And that is all for this video. So if you've enjoyed the video or learned anything, like and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video.